And now we're gonna check out our Dodge Daytona, one of 294 440 Magnum automatics. What we wanna know is should the car be restored or left alone? Okay, 69 Charger Daytona. This is your cup of tea, you own one of these. Yes, sir. Incidentally, Tony's Daytona won OE Gold two years ago, three years ago. Yes, it did. It also won Concourse the Elegance. So the question on this one, Tony, is we know it's rare, we know it's super valuable. Let me give you a quick background. This guy bought the car brand new in 1969. Original owner? Original owner car, okay. has had it his entire life, dated his wife in this car, because he bought it when he was in high school. They've been married 46 years, I think she said. This was a gift to him to have it sent out and have it restored. Oh wow, oh that's cool. But I know that you're a negative person and I know that by nature you like to find things wrong with everything when people are trying to have joy. And so I just want to make sure that I, I have your- I think I'm realistic, not negative. Wow. The question is, it's not a perfect mint condition survivor number one car, but how many are out there? How right. many, especially wing cars are? Yeah. So now, I think that it should be restored to OEM, correct, original, right down to every nut bolt, just like we do. What I want is your opinion on whether you think it should be done that way, and then we'll make the final decision before I call the cut. If customer. it's a good enough survivor, I'll, I'll pitch a fit and fight you to leave it alone. You okay. know why? As good as your restorations are, they're only original ones. I know. So here's where you know your stuff really, really well. This is a little bit different than the Superbird, correct? This is different than almost every other car. Okay. When this car left the assembly line, it was a 440. We learned that in previous episodes. It was an RT 440 car, whether it was four-speed or automatic. It right. was an XX29 car. So let's talk about this car leaving the assembly line. It was destined to be a Hemi Orange 69 Daytona Charger. That's what it was d designed as. That's that, what, it that's what its final was going to end up. How it left the assembly line was a complete 69 Charger RT. Okay without a bumper and grill. Okay. So it was painted, it went through the, the uh, it got baked through the paint booth and everything, it was all. So this is what I want to know then. When it went over to Creative Industries and it had the 70 Charger fenders put on it. Modified, 70, char modified 70 Charger fenders. Modified 70 right. Charger fenders. And the 70 Charger hood. Right. <clears throat> and the fast top filled in back here with the plug. Yeah. And the shortened up deck lid. Mm -hmm. How much of the original factory paint should be left on this car? Okay the most that could be left, because think about it. The fender's hood and nose are painted. You did the whole thing. There's nowhere to stop on the roof once you do this, so you're painting the whole roof. They're painting the roof, they're painting the whole You have to do the deck lid. The whole uh, Dutchman area. Because it's got shortened so the Which most is the quarter you... panels too, because there's nowhere to stop, unless no, they did a reverse. They did re the most you could have original paint on a Daytona is the door and the side of the quarter panel. My understanding uh, from somebody uh, pretty knowledgeable on this stuff, was that the doors were the only things that were original paint. That's... Is that possible? Oh yeah, it's, I mean, but they've also, it was all over the board, there were 503 cars, it depends how the color came out, how it matched. You know, Maybe it was quicker cars. to set up the door and just gun it, you know, than you to said, try to match it between two panels. Sometimes the whole panels. car was painted. Right. Uh, but you could see there's a picture of, uh, there's an old photograph of a number of cars on a car hall, all wing cars, yep, yep. getting dropped off after they were converted. And you could see the different in sheen because yeah. the paintwork that was done was not done in a booth. No, it was done it out in the middle of the assembly shop and it was done in lacquer. It was hand, it? and yeah, by hand, by like hand. Not, not in a nice, you know, climate the control million booth, dollar right, control baked setup. on. Yep. So it was, it was like a couple guys in the backyard almost. I just thought of another panel that could be, that wouldn't have needed to be touched, right? That's true. The cow the panel. The cow. And see, we got peeling paint down in there. Right. So is that factory peeling paint? That's doubtful, right? I've never seen factory paint peel like that. Job. But remember, this isn't typical factory paint. This right. Is this is spray. Hand shot lacquer. So it could be that this got sprayed and that's what's peeling back, but what's underneath it? It should be the orange paint underneath it. Right, it should be the paint. orange. Right. So, my, my thought is, is that probably has all been repainted at some time. But look at the difference between the machine of the cowl on the door and the nose itself. Yeah. This will buff out, that's not the point, but it's just that that door looks like it's in good shape, but so does the quarter and so does the roof. Right, I, I know. It's... So maybe the car got popped at some point in its life too. I mean, I see, I, I don't know how far they went, but they would. I see uh, paint see, on see... that fender this hideous. Right, hideous. and the Pentastar wouldn't have had paint because that would have been a new fender installed. Right afterwards. Right. 